the great sovereignty of Botswana and its proud people. Please give them a round. Our partners in the African diaspora. Tomorrow you will receive a magazine from Bethel's Place, Black Chamber of Commerce, Houston, Texas, their magazine, which there's an article in there I've written about the need for ec econ economic unity amongst the African diaspora. And it talks about this program, other programs we have following up, but uh, me and, and Alex of uh, the uh, BOCAM, the Chamber of Commerce of Botswana, are starting to engage in dialogue and develop a strategic plan on how the opportunities that spring up in the United States and that spring up in Botswana where we can engage both sides of the nations of black entrepreneurs to come together and take advantage of those opportunities. The city of Atlanta, Georgia is the birthplace of black economic development. In 1902, Booker T. Washington spoke in the city on the need for African Americans to join in the Industrial Revolution through entrepreneurship and building. And then later, decades later, the great Maynard Jackson became mayor of Atlanta and made Atlanta the focal point of black business development. It came at great cost to him. He died early, but he made many, many black millionaires and set a model for Chicago, Detroit, Cleveland, Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., other great mayors followed the footsteps of Maynard Jackson. So it's just fitting for us to be here today on our 20th anniversary in the hometown of Maynard Jackson, Martin Luther King, and the great speech of Booker T. Washington. Thank you all for coming. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Harry Arford. And let me introduce myself. I'm Kakama Zomuloi from uh, Botswana Investment and Trade Center. And now I'd like to call upon uh, Her Excellency, uh, Dr. Tebele Loserete, the ambassador of Botswana to the USA to come and make her remarks. Thank you very much, uh, Remuloi. Uh, Mr. Harry Alford and Kay, the executive members of the NBCC, our honorable minister, who is heading an 85-person delegation from Botswana, chiefs, <laughs> chiefs of industry from Botswana, distinguished participants, good afternoon to all of you. What an honor, what a pride that we have today. I first met NBCC and they didn't believe the words I was telling them about Botswana. Today, I am glad and very happy and proud indeed that I don't need to say anything. The people who are going to say something are right here before you, the chiefs of industry, people who have put Botswana and continue to put Botswana to be the shi shining beacon, to be the jewel of Africa. Africa is always projected in a negative light. The people who are gathered here, members of the NBCC, please do yourselves a favor, talk to them and find out how this uniqueness was, came about how this democracy, which is the leader of democracy on the African continent, and remember, distinguished guests, Africa is made up of 53 countries, or is it 54 now? 54 with uh, South Sudan, which has just come in. And often, Africa is lumped, and when it is lumped, the diamonds which shine, like the country of Botswana, are lost. How could a continent so rich with everything, with the beautiful women that you see, <laughs> with the economy, with all the minerals in the world, how could history ever called this continent a dark continent? This is a continent which shines, and your institutions here, the Bretton Woods institutions, World Bank and IMF, said that any serious person 
in America, any serious business person who wants their voice heard should be looking at Africa. For it is only in Africa that we are going to see global rates of 5% and over. Botswana is the only country in the world, not in Africa, in the world, that for 40 continuous years has grown at a rate of 5% and above continuously. <laughs> if it was in my tribe, we will say that this is a ghost country. Ya yeah, <laughs> It is a record which will never ever be surpassed by any country on the globe. Before you today, Mr. Chairman, members of NBCC, we bring this country, a humble country which, whose citizens have remained humble. And as I always say to you, I'm probably their first loudmouth ambassador who say, <laughs> who say to everybody, the business community, my fellow African ambassadors, that I represent goodness, that I represent style that I represent the best management. And before you today, I bring you our minister, a woman of substance who has come leading this huge delegation. And when I get the minister up, you better all stand. <laughs> this is our minister of trade and industry, which if we were not here, I would say she's my young sister. In Botswana, as you'll discover sooner rather than later, because we are only two million, we are interrelated by marriage, by birth, and by everything else. This is why to vet any of us, it's always easy. That welcomes you to do the business. Dockers has a long career. In the private sector, you want to talk about sport, you talk to this woman. You want to talk about automobile industry in Botswana, you talk to this woman. You want to talk about Bedia, these young people that you see running around here introducing themselves, I'm the chief executive of Bedia. <laughs> they are trying to step in her big shoes. She left footprints, footprints which are difficult to emulate. And in Botswana, as you can see the women, we are proud for if you educate the woman, you empower the nation. If you educate a man, you educate an individual. Honorable Minister, <laughs> it is my singular pleasure. President, I'm not quite sure whether I'm allowed to call them crazy. They are a crazy bunch <laughs> of people. Well, thank you very much. Before I go into the formalities, I was actually going to get them to stand up because they are wearing our traditional dress and they're actually wearing our national colors as it were. So I thought you could stand up and they can appreciate uh, the beautiful colors. The, the ambassador has tried, uh, but she's obviously been too long in the States. Uh, this is, uh, uh, she's got the right colors, but uh, the cut is very American. Uh, <laughs> Good afternoon. Mr. President, let me first of all thank you for having allowed us to interrupt your very important 20th convention. It's for good reason. Uh, we feel very honored that you allowed us to be part and parcel of this convention this year. 
We are also happy that a good number of your members came to Botswana, appreciated what Botswana is known for. Uh, it's known for starting with the, the steak that we talked about just now. Uh, you've told me that it is the best in the world. I hope I'm quoting you correctly. And ever since you've had that steak in Botswana, you can't have any other steak other than the Botswana steak. Um, today, I'm leading a delegation of not uh, of about 85 people. First of all, I'm very proud that they made it possible for themselves to be here. When the invitation went out and we said we are coming here, we told them exactly what we wanted to achieve. They then said, yes, we are also going to go. So the expectations are very high. The expectations have been set by us in Botswana in terms of where you want to go as an economy, but the expectations equally have been set by the group that came to Botswana because of that excitement. And our private sector felt that it was necessary to reciprocate. So this mission comprises of the private sector. Uh, I'll call him president for now, but the real president is at home. Uh, he is <laughs> with a good number of uh, his members. Also, we have uh, government uh, departments, parastatals, uh, independent companies coming out of Botswana. In total, there's about 85 of us for this mission. So we are going to have a busy three days. I'm going, I've decided not to give a speech because speeches are very boring. Uh, so I'll give a presentation uh, because you'll get to understand and appreciate what I'm going to, so, uh, to say much easier. Secondly, the presentation will also be available for you to take home so that you can refer to at a later stage. It's going to be a very short pre pre uh, presentation, very high level. We'll give you a, an overview of the country, our relationships with the U.S., uh, our approach as Botswana to investment, and the various initiatives that uh, we have put together as government, and the incentives to attract uh, investment, and then I'll talk a little bit about market access. Let's start with uh, the country. Uh, the ambassador has already said that we are a country of uh, a population of about 2 million. Uh, in terms of business, don't worry too much about that because later on in my presentation, I'll talk about market access and the arrangements that we've got in place that will render the 2 million uh, number very irrelevant. Uh, our country is in the center of about four countries. We share the borders with South Africa, Zimbabwe, Namibia, and Zambia. In, term of, in terms of land area, because we are in the States, I would say the size is similar to the state of Texas, just so that you can have a feel. Uh, the GDP real growth for 2011, 5.1. GDP per capita just under 8,000 USD. In the last five years, we have experienced tremendous growth. It was much higher than that in the 70s, 80s. But uh, you're looking at an average of 7.2 if you exclude mining, which is a significant fa factor within our economy. We are very well known for our political and economic stability. The World Bank IMF, and all the other reputable institutions have written the story of Botswana. We are rated as an upper middle income country with a very high uh, per capita income, which I've said is just under 8,000 US dollars. Um, currently, Botswana has the highest sovereign ratings in Africa. Our economic growth has largely been fueled by what has been happening in the mining industry particularly in the diamond industry. America is a significant, a very important market. What happens here uh, in America basically does affect in big terms, in real terms, what happens in Botswana. And we are watching very, very carefully uh, in terms of uh, the political landscape. We don't have a position, but we are watching very carefully. Um, in terms of uh, macroeconomic fundamentals, the absence of exchange control since 1999 has been a big factor it gives us an edge over those that we compete for investment with. And largely, we compete with South Africa, we compete with Mozambique, we compete uh, with Namibia for inward investment. This basically says to the businesses that come and set up in Botswana, bring in your money, you can easily take it out, you can repatriate your profits, and it is really easy to do business with us. You don't have to, bottle, uh, to, to sit down and do a lot of all these bureaucratic things that normally happen in other countries uh, once you deal with your cash. Moody's and Standards and Poor's have rated us A. I know that uh, it has been A plus, and recently we were uh, graded A minus, and I said to me, it doesn't matter. Uh, if you go to school, you either get an A or a B or a C. So an A is an A, whether it's got a minus or plus, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and especially if you look what is happening with the big economies in Europe right now, if you look at the Eurozone, you will realize that for a small country in the middle of Africa to retain its A status, I think it's an achievement. We've been rated the least corrupt in Africa. 
we're very transparent, sometimes too transparent for our own good. And that, that transparency goes within how we transact our business, within how government um, uh, attracts people to come and uh, participate in its tendering system, uh, our openness in terms of how we interact with the private sector. We engage them at equal footing. And uh, I think it's a good thing. Uh, that is why perhaps you see that our ratings continue to, 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 to go up. And we have retained, I think we've been the least corrupt in Africa for a while now. We used to think that Botswana was uh, a small landlocked country. I think that was the mindset. Now we see ourselves as a country that is right at the center of the development of, uh, of SADC or Southern African Development Community. It gives us access to four countries immediately who are our neighbors. It also, because of our safety, because of our success, because of our governance structures, and because of our reputation, we believe that a lot of businesses can come and do business in Botswana with a view to enter the immediate market that are surrounding Botswana. Uh, in terms of literacy rate, it's at 82%. The relevance of that is that you do, once you get in, you do adopt a trainable workforce. Relations, long, outstanding, cordial bilateral relations. I think the ambassador will address this better than I do. But um, we currently have a mission in Washington. We have a permanent mission also to the UN, which is in New York and a number of honorary councils. I think it's not easy for you to attract honorary councils. You don't want to uh, associate yourself with something that is unknown or something that you can't trust. The fact that we do have reputable people, people in good standing or people of good stature who are willing to be honorary council says a lot about our reputation and integrity. Currently, the USA Trade Hub offices are in Botswana. Again, that expands the scope within which we can interact and work hand in hand with uh, the US. But if you take that relationship to a regional level, SACU is uh, a customs union, Southern African customs union, that Botswana is a part there too. There's about five countries. We do have an agreement between SACU and the US. That gives you access to the immediate market that I'll talk about just now, which is about 50 million people, the countries that are there, Botswana, South Africa, Namibia, Lesotho, and Swaziland. In fact, the number is slightly above that is about 52 million people. Uh, it gives you duty-free, quota-free access. That's why I said the two million of uh, the p two million rather population of Botswana is in a way irrelevant, because if you can do business, you immediately have an immediate market which is within the same customs union of 50 million, and you can take it further to the Southern African Development Community, which is about 250, 258 million thereabout. And um, if you are a company trading in Botswana, doing business in Botswana, you can also, within the AGOA or the Africa Growth Opportunity Act, access the duty-free quota free market into the USA. So the borders, the numbers become irrelevant. Uh, all that matters now is the quality, the efficacy of your business to be able to access other markets. Uh, beyond the US, we are currently have an interim uh, economic partnership agreement uh, we're hoping by now we'll be talking about an economic partnership agreement, not an interim agreement. We had, we had signed, but because there's quite a few of us in this arrangement, others were not as ready as we are. We are hoping, we are optimistic that at uh, the end of this year, we should change the status from interim to economic partnership agreement. I'm optimistic because I currently chair the group, the SADC group that is negotiating with, uh, with the EU. Also, the exciting things in the immediate is the current agreements or the current discussions and negotiations that are, going, that are taking place at Africa level, the three economic blocks, which is SADC, um, Botswana belongs to that. EAC is the whole of Eastern Africa, including Egypt, Comesa is on the, on the west. If you put that together, you're looking at a market of about 700 million people. Currently, we are negotiating a free trade agreement that will allow those that are we think there to be able to participate in, in each other's economy without much stress. In terms of investments that we are looking for, we're not looking for everything. Uh, it is a well thought out process. We are looking for those investments that will be strategic to our economic diversification. If you say to me, what is it that is keeping you awake in terms of your job right now? It is the extent to which our economy is diversified. It is the extent to which in the absence of diamonds, in the absence of, of mining, to what extent can our economy uh, basically survive? That is why we are looking for investments that will uh, expand our agenda uh, in terms of economic diversification. Also, given the size of our market, we're looking at an export-led economy, and therefore export-oriented industry in manufacturing, in services is exactly what we are looking for. 
for it to make sense to our people, for it to make sense to us, and equally for it to make sense to the businesses, uh, those investments that will have technology and skills transfer, that will create sustainable employment, that can exploit the natural resources that we have uh, a, a lot of, that can uh, beneficiate uh, a number of uh, activities within the mining, outside mining, and that can have meaningful citizen participation. These are the things that we we'll use normally to define the nature and the stature of the investment that you are bringing in. And to what extent we take you seriously, we would have to look at a number of all these uh, uh, um, reasons. Sometimes we use that, or in many instances, we use that even to, to decide whether you should pay tax or you should have a tax break. Uh, we have arrangements in place to say to you, you, you might uh, uh, not pay tax for five years or you might not pay tax for 10 years. But for us to get to that level of conversation, we'll be looking and evaluating the nature of the investment in terms of these ideals. I'm not going to go too much into the sectors. There's many of them. Tourism is going to do a presentation. Mining, I'll go a little bit into agro-processing, financial services, renewable energy, and also those um, activities that happen within the six or so hubs that we have. Let me start with the Diamond Hub. I start with that because it is a significant one and it is a very important one. All of them are important, but this one is significant because of what has been happening in terms of that industry. Uh, as a government, we decided that there were core areas that we wanted to concentrate on and focus on. There's five of them, the six of them. Uh, it is the Diamond Hub, it is the agricultural sector, it is the health sector, transport and logistics for connectivity. It is, um, I think it is, yeah. Transport, innovation, health, education, agriculture, and uh, I think I left Diamond Hub. We felt that these were the areas in our economy that needed a concerted effort for us to be able to go to the next level of our development. With, re with reference to the hub, I'm sure you all know that for many years, Botswana has been known to be the biggest producer of diamonds by value in the world. It was just surprising that despite that, we still had to take our diamonds to another country in the world for us to be able to trade. And we felt that we needed to negotiate, and we negotiated with a little bit of aggression, and rightfully so, for us to then call the shots in terms of that which we produce the best of in terms of value in the world. So we negotiated. Uh, for the relocation of this diamond trading center. It is going to be in Botswana. Part of it has already started. It's a big thing because we're talking billions of dollars in terms of transactions. And the value addition then becomes key in terms of this uh, whole uh, process. The other thing that is exciting is the fact that we have 200 billion tons of coal in Botswana. For us to be able to turn that into money, we have had to develop a coal roadmap that not only talks about getting it out of the ground, it talks about how you will transport it uh, to, to the port and then how you will basically sell it to those that uh, will use it. It talks about what you can do inland to basically get much more value out of it. Uh, the need for self-sufficiency of power generation in Botswana and in the region is a key factor. It also makes uh, the mining and investment opportunities very key. New mine mineral discoveries and minerals uh, beneficiation in, in total. I'm going to skip over this, but these hubs, basically we thought they were important for us to focus our energies in the right places and resource accordingly. Transport, the fact that we are landlocked becomes key innovation hub. That's going to be our next area of development to accelerate the tra technology transfer and acquisition. Health hub, uh, currently our government pays for education. It pays for health. And already without even doing anything, you know that you have guaranteed market because government will spend, government uh, will basically uh, procure from you. So it is an exciting market. The Diamond Hub I've talked about. Education Hub, our view is to make Botswana a destination of choice in terms of education. We have done a couple of studies that clearly articulates and says to us that you can concentrate on those things that you're good at. You can concentrate on governance, you can concentrate on tourism, you can concentrate on mining, because we've demonstrated by having, ma having managed these resources so well to the world that you know how it's done. So package it, let people come and learn, but make money out of it at the same time. Agriculture, the bulk of our population, about 60% are cattle people. Is that the right terminology? <laughs> Cattle people. 
Well, cattle people, because in terms of our culture, I think uh, currently the numbers are 3.5 cattle population versus 2 million. So I'm sure I can say we're cattle people. Uh, it's part of our culture, and uh, each and every one of us, we have to have a cow. I think I have a few. I don't know how many. Uh, you know, when, when I left the Botswana National Sports Council, the women that were there bought me five uh, female cattle. Apparently, there's eight of them. I haven't seen, you know. So it's just an everyday thing. So it made sense for us because it, it creates employment within the rural community, development, and so forth. So it made sense for us to treat it as a hub as well. This is my last slide. We compete, hear it from me, because figures don't lie. We compete very well in terms of tax. Currently, if you go into the manufacturing financial services and so forth, you'll be looking at 15% tax. We compete against 25% uh, to 35% around the region, if you are looking at whether to set up in Botswana versus setting up in the immediate uh, market. Corporate tax is at 22%, and personal tax is at 25%. I'm sure this is better than the US. I haven't checked the figures, but I'm sure it Highest is. <laughs> so, you see now, so you, you, all you have to do is come and invest and leave your money in Botswana and come and enjoy it from time to time, you know. Uh, <laughs> um, in terms of value added tax, is that 12% competing against 16% in the region, that is an average. I talked a little bit about the tax holiday 5 to 10 years, it will depend on the nature of your investment, how, how strategic it is to economic diversification, how many sustainable jobs is going to create, and so forth. Uh, beyond that, also, there is a 200% tax allowance for training costs. Uh, basically, in simple terms, it means if you are going to train people, you then can claim when you do your tax returns, and you will get 200% uh, allowance in terms of the training costs. Flexible foreign exchange controls, I talked about those. You can actually open uh, open uh, accounts in, in hard currency. That is the extent to which we are um, comfortable with ourselves. I talked about free re uh, repatriation of profits, so th there are no issues there if you compete with, with others. So in short, I just thought I'll just give you a fly overview of Botswana as a market to invest, Botswana as a country that is well run, a country that is competing with the best uh, in, in the world, and uh, I hope beyond the 15 or so that have come so far. I think, 15, I, guess. I think it's more than that. No, since you came here, I'm just counting from since you came here, my sister. Yeah. <laughs> we need to build on those numbers for you to go and see beyond the talk, uh, to see in reality, and then you'll get even more excited and you'll come and invest. Thank you very much for your audience. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Honorable Minister, for sharing those facts and figures on Botswana. I would now like to call upon uh, Mr. Lamek and Takela from the Botswana Investment and Trade Center to come and uh, share with you the role of BITC. Mr. Lamek and Takela. There we go. Uh, Honorable Minister, Me Makatu Malesu, Your Excellency, Me Ma Srete, President of the National Black Chamber of Commerce, Harry Alford, President of the Botswana Confederation of Commerce, Industry, and Manpower, Raymond Chusi, all delegates, a very good afternoon to you. My presentation agenda is going to speak to the mandate of Bedia, obviously. Uh, Honorable, Honorable, Honorable Makatu Malesu has spoken about the location, geographic location of Botswana, but I'm going to speak about the mandate of the Botswana Investment and Trade Center, which is a culmination of uh, two entities, which was formerly the Botswana Export Development and Investment Authority and the Botswana International Financial Services Center. I'm going to speak to what we do, what we facilitate, and I'll finally speak 
to one of our premier entities that we do carry out every year, which is an event called the Global Expo Botswana. We've seen the geographic lo location of Botswana already in Southern Africa and who we are. As I've already indicated, we are the focal point for the national branding. Hence, the various banners that you see, our pride, your destination. That is our national brand and our national logo, the one just behind me. We also um, have as our mandate to drive the diversification of the economy. And we are charged with improving and also increasing employment opportunities. Part of our mandate is also to provide policy advocacy where we find bottlenecks in our uh, policies. We have to rectify those together with the business community. We also provide factory shells or lease out factory shells and also provide a service to acquire land where organizations or firms want to build their own tailor-made uh, industries or factory shells. We also encourage citizen participation, as already stressed by the Honorable Minister, meaningful participation where we don't do what we call fronting. We want our local citizens to be equal partners in those businesses. This is the nature of investment that we already seek, and I think the Minister has already spoken about that and the investment opportunities in the various sectors of the economy. We also do provide specific and specialized services in terms of attracting financial services in the country, where we would like to see international business companies setting up headquartered in Botswana, as well as seeing international insurance companies operating in the country. We also serve as a focal point for various entities that include uh, investment funds. The Botswana Investment and Trade Center provides another service in terms of business or in terms of um, trade promotion, where we do promote exports. We also provide a program called the Export development program where we bring our exporters to export readiness. The various sectors that we do provide services for, as already alluded to, includes in other areas other than the diamond sector and the, uh, the beef sector, we do provide fo uh, focused assistance in terms of um, manufacturing sectors such as the light industrial manufacturing as well as in terms of uh, further downstream products, such as the uh, diversification and also beneficiation of the diamond industry. I've already indicated that we serve as the focal point for the national brand, and the purpose of the national brand is to galvanize all Botswana around a set of values. We also pride ourselves in terms of having this um, brand as an element that stimulates growth in terms of export revenues that are generated from our companies and also in terms of accelerating innovation in new industries and in tourism so that at least we have a large number of visitations to our country such that we realize revenues from the visitations. We know that as investors from the US, you have expectations, and those expect expectations we fulfill by providing short turnaround times in terms of facilitating uh, uh, business processes. We do provide services such as um, providing uh, efficiency in services such that we provide simple procedures, we provide simple processes so that the business community doesn't have a long uh, bureaucracy uh, in terms of uh, establishing their entities. We also coordinate incentive packages, linking various ministries 
with ourselves as a focal point such that when you come in as a business entity from the U.S., we are the doormat in terms of speaking to the various ministries that provide those incentives. We also undertake targeted missions to various destinations, such as this one, and we also focus in terms of um, arranging meetings, one-on-one -on -one meetings. When you come to Botswana, we will handhold you from whichever port of entry, such that we arrange your meetings. We also take you to various and introduce you to various uh, players in the economy. We also provide follow-ups in terms of uh, the meetings that you have undertaken. We pre-arrange those meetings before you arrive, and we do provide those uh, facilitative uh, activities. We also undertake business matchmaking activities where we also help you in terms of following up whether uh, the business that you have um, actually entered into or the business that you have uh, actually promoted in the country or the business that has been promoted within your country, we make sure that we follow up and see to it that that deal is sealed. We provide another element that is very interesting in terms of aftercare facilities where we do make visitations to those companies that have already set up in our country. We look at how they are doing. We see to it that we help them also in terms of finding markets through our export development program. We do facilitate in terms of carrying out audits, market audits. We do undertake research on their behalf. We also do engage in terms of liaising with other institutions that are sister organizations in those countries. The Global Expo is a premier exhibition that takes place in Botswana every year. And this takes place in November. And this year is going to take place from the 21st to the 24th of November. And we would like to see companies coming from this state to Botswana to come and exhibit, to come and showcase their products, to come and share their business acumen with our people in Botswana. And this is a platform that also offers you a place where you can have uh, linkages or where you can have representatives that can serve you in the southern, southern African region. I just wanted to share with you our rankings in terms of how we've been performing over the years as an investment promotion agency. And we've been rated and awarded the best promotion agency in Africa in 2009. And this was through the Africa Investor and Business Leaders Award. We have also been awarded and ranked amongst the best four performing IPAs in Southern Africa by the World Bank. And we have also been ranked amongst the four best performing IPAs in Southern Africa still by the same institution. We pride ourselves in saying that we handhold you from any port of entry when you come into Botswana, set up the meetings and help you clinch the deal that you want with our local entrepreneurs. Thank you very much. I appreciate your attention. Where have you ever seen a serious man buy you a ring and you lose it? Ladies, whose ring is this? <laughs> if it is yours, come and tell me how many stones there are in here and you can claim it. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me apologize that we are not going to have uh, questions and or comments uh, between presentations, but we are, however, available after, after, after the presentations maybe to take your, your questions uh, outside uh, this, this forum.
Uh, I would like to call upon uh, the President of Botswana Confederation of Commerce, Industry and Manpower, commonly known as BOKIM, uh, Mr. Alex uh, Munchusi, to come and uh, make his, uh, his remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Master of Ceremonies. The, the, the eloquent ones have already spoken. So uh, don't expect much from me. I'm only an engineer, not, uh, not an orator. But uh, Honorable Minister of Trade, Mayor Dokas Makatomale, Your Excellency, uh, Botswana Ambassador, Mayor Matebelo Serete, President of Botswana National Ch Black Chamber of Commerce, uh, Harry Alford, and your committee, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. On behalf of Bokim and the whole of the private sector in Botswana, I would like to uh, take this opportunity to thank the NBCC uh, for the invitation to be amongst uh, yourselves today. Of course, Bokim did host the NBCC in October last year, uh, and we had uh, very uh, good uh, interactions uh, at the time. In fact, in the build-up to this uh, event, I, I can quote Mr. Harry Alford from uh, his uh, online magazine, eBlast, and he said this on the 2nd of, uh, of February uh, uh, 2012. He's headed, Botswana is beginning to rock. <laughs> Our past trade mission to this beautiful nation is starting to bear fruit. Several big deals are now in play. There is a contingent of Botswana entrepreneurs coming to our 20th annual, annual convention in Atlanta in search of joint venturing on identified projects in our, with our members. In fact, we will kick off the convention with a segment entitled Botswana Day, which is, which is today. Uh, a formal MOU between the two chambers will be executed at this event. And then he went on to say this. They are motivated, we are motivated, and big things are beginning to happen. Thank you, Harry Alford. That was very, uh, uh, very much, very on, on the mark. Uh, ladies and distinguished guests, uh, my presentation is going to be very brief. I'm going to start with by uh, talking to you briefly about who Bokim is, and then I want to talk about the situation at play as, as regards uh, uh, Botswana government vis-a-vis -vis, uh, uh, private sector and business participation. Uh, then I want to go on to focus on some key focus areas uh, uh, in, uh, with Bokim as regards the possibility for collaboration with the NBCC moving forward. And finally, I'll touch on an example area that uh, I believe is an opportunity for our different members to, to collaborate uh, on. And finally, of course, uh, we will talk about the MOU briefly before we, we go on to, to do the signing. Oh, got to get my slide up. Where are we? Thank you. Thank you, Ilamek. Bokim, ladies and gentlemen, is the voice of business in Botswana. Uh, we drive the process of sustainable economic so and social development and the promotion of good governance, uh, advocacy, representation, and provision of services to members is our key focus. Working members uh, in Botswana generally get recognition for being affiliated with a business network uh, uh, of professionals and ethic ethical uh, business network that has the ability to influence government policy through engagement in constructive dialogue uh, and also working advocates for the creation of a business-friendly uh, environment. We represent the interests of our members both uh, nationally and internationally. Uh, in terms of the situation at play, today with Botswana. Uh, under the NDP, the National Development Plan 10, Botswana is actually making a transition uh, from a, a government-driven economy 
to a private sector uh, driven economy. And this is an area that given that America is a, 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 a private sector led economy, we could pick up a lot of uh, uh, experience from the NBCC and share ideas in terms of uh, uh, how we can uh, uh, drive this agenda going forward. Government is moving away from doing business to regulatory, national strategy, and, and, and the public good. So there is uh, uh, plans underway for privatization, outsourcing, and the right sizing of government. The opportunities uh, uh, that, that come with this uh, are what I want to focus on as, as, two, as four focus areas specifically for this, uh, for Bokim. Uh, what comes out of the, the, this NDP 10 uh, is out of what's called in Botswana the, the Botswana Excellence Strategy is an initiative called the Economic Diversification Drive. This is a, a focus area for Bokim. There is the uh, Private Sector Development Strategy, another area that we are focusing on in Bokim. Capacity building for Bokim and improving the government private sector interface. These are the areas that we believe there is room for collaboration with the NBCC. Again, in terms of EDD, opportunities in outsourcing, privatization, right-sizing of government. Generally trying to uh, build a private sector capacity to provide services to government uh, and, and, uh, and supplies for, for, for running a government business. Private sector development strategy, uh, we would like to interrogate the possibility of NBCC assisting us with, with implementation of some of the Bokim initiatives, use the experience and mentorship of a private sector-led economy, uh, mentorship in relationship with government, with government on government business. Let the Americans help uh, us project an image and stature of Bokim to government that makes government take us uh, uh, more seriously. These, ladies and gentlemen, are some of the issues that are uh, uh, at play and we need to, as, as a private sector, have a challenge to, to try to, to focus on and, and, and develop ourselves on as, as we, we move into a private sector-led uh, economy. Capacity building at Bokim in, in terms of leadership, resources, strategies, and information systems. We believe this is why we are starting with uh, a SANI and MOU between ourselves and NBCC to create that uh, bilateral relationship. They can assist us, as I said earlier, in strengthening our partnership with government, share ideas there, uh, and develop the various uh, uh, sector desks and activities at, uh, at, at Bokim. In terms of improving the, the government private sector in, uh, interface, we need to strengthen uh, uh, some of the concepts that are at play in, in Botswana, like the thematic working groups. This is the, 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 the arrangement that's now in place in the revision or the, the review of the current national development plan where government, in collaboration with the private sector, are looking at how to improve the, uh, uh, the, the development plan to achieve its set of objectives. Now our concern here is that the collaborative uh, 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 relationship needs to be deepened, needs to be more meaningful, it needs to recognize the different players as equal partners so that we can actually contribute uh, uh, towards uh, our, our development as, as a private sector. Again, talking about the enhancing of the stature of Bokim, we believe, as I discussed with Mr. Alford earlier, that uh, there's a lot we can share with them or they can share with us in, in that area. We need to, to develop a robust agenda for the high-level consultative council. This is a, a platform where government, in partnership with the private sector, discuss the various issues in the country and, and we try to find a way forward. We need to move it to the next level, where instead of it being a routine reporting uh, structure, we use it as a platform to develop and propel forward uh, national policies and the, the implementation of those. The same with the National Business Conference, which we are holding in, uh, in October this year. Uh, in terms of opportunities in the private sector, so those were the areas, very briefly, that we, we believe we can collaborate chamber to chamber, uh, uh, Bokim and, and, and and NBCC to, to capacitate ourselves going forward as, uh, as strong and worthy partners with the, with the government of Botswana. We, we already enjoy a very good relationship with government, but a lot of our members are saying, but where are the results of that? And therefore, we are trying to, <laughs> the minister is smiling, but this is the pressure that, that we get, that members are saying, this is a, a feel-good club, and we want results and, and not just cordial relationships. So we need to work on some of these, these issues. But in terms of opportunities in the private sector, ladies and gentlemen, I think the, the speakers before me have mentioned quite a number of these, um, agriculture, manufacturing, and so on and so forth. 
We, I just wish to home in in one area, which I believe is a good example of uh, opportunities that are actually existing now in Botswana, uh, and which we, we believe is quite an urgent situation in terms of uh, uh, ready for investment uh, uh, and, uh, and moving forward. The Minister of Trade has just spoken earlier about the signing of the, the sales agreement, the Diamond Sales Agreement and the relocation of the DTC, the Diamond Trading Center to, to Botswana. In our view, when we first had this announcement uh, towards the end of last year, as Bokim, as a private sector, we, we, we were concerned. Uh, we were very happy, we were excited, we thought this should have been done a long time ago, but our concern was that this was to us very, because the, the trading was going to be starting very soon, it's starting this year. And our concern was that this was very similar to a nation that has just won the right to host the Olympics. So we have a situation where there is too much to do and too little time. Uh, and after, after a while, we began to feel that the government was moving somewhat too slowly uh, uh, for us to be, to be ready to, uh, to host the, 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 the billionaires and, and millionaires who will be coming to, to, to trade in Botswana. So briefly, we, we felt that clearly from the agreement, the actual physical trading of diamonds will take place in Khaboron, and there's no looking back uh, in, in that regard. Our concern, however, uh, was that will this tra diamond trading center uh, uh, create, because it creates a need for social, religious, and cultural enterprise with a, a new urban dynamic to ensure that Khaboroni becomes economically vibrant and, and sustainable even beyond diamonds. How then does Khaboroni ensure that the experience of being a diamond city is a holistic one, capturing all the downstream activities uh, and businesses within, within the city? And we believe this is also an area where uh, our members and, the, and members of NBCC uh, can, can collaborate so that together we can ensure that Khaboron does not lose these opportunities to, to neighboring cities like Johannesburg and in Cape Town. As you know, uh, Cape Town and Johannesburg are about uh, 20, 25 minutes by jet uh, into, into Khaboroni. So if we're not careful, the businessmen in, will come in to do the trading, will simply uh, base base themselves in, uh, in Joburg, in Cape Town, fly in in the morning, uh, and then fly back out. And in that, in, if that happens, we will lose out on the various uh, opportunities that uh, we could have benefited from. With that, it, with that in mind, ladies and gentlemen, we uh, at Bokim felt that there was a need to focus uh, our government's attention and perhaps the attention of the nation in general by coming up with uh, a, a theme which we say, let's rebrand Khaboroni. Let's rebrand Khaboroni so that uh, it, it's seen and known as a, as a diamond city. So if you say Khaboroni DC, like you say Washington DC, you know that Khaboroni DC means Khaboroni diamond city. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so we thought that that's what we needed to do in order to focus everybody into what it is that is needed uh, uh, for Khaboroni to be ready to host this uh, uh, international activity. Because the reality was that Khaboron was in fact joining a new league of cities, which are the diamond uh, uh, centers of the world. And, and whether we like it or not, that is exactly what is, uh, is happening. The challenge, of course, is that uh, Khaboron was not designed as a diamond city. But Bokim therefore proposed that uh, we could do a benchmark of the diamond cities of the world uh, and, and to see if we cannot create a model of the city that we would like to see uh, in years to come. And again, uh, Mr. Alford, I believe that therein lies another opportunity for us to collaborate with the NBCC. But what are the diamond cities of the world? What, are they, what cities are we talking about? What are we benchmarking and what are the features of those cities? Let's look at a few. In New York City, we have Diamond District. Antwerp Diamond uh, uh, District as well. And uh, Diamond Exchange District. Uh, in Israel, okay, so those three. And now we are saying we have Diamond Hub in Khaboroni, which uh, presents an opportunity. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you. So if we look at each one of these cities, uh, uh, one by one, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's look at New York, uh, as uh, the New York Diamond District, uh, historically, uh, as well as the, the facts or, or some of the, the features of that uh, uh, diamond district. 
created by the Jews who fled the Netherlands and Belgium during World War II. It is the primary center for, for global diamond industry, premier center for diamond jewelry in New York. Uh, you may not know this, but 90% of the diamonds of the USA enter uh, through New York. On average, $400 million in deals daily. It also houses the Diamond Dealers Club, which, is, which has got its own uh, uh, Jewish uh, temple or synagogue. We look at Antwerp. What are the characteristics of Antwerp? It's got 80% of rough diamonds passing through Antwerp annually. It regained its position on the back of uh, uh, DBS supplies. Those are uh, 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 diamonds coming out of Africa. Over 12,000 diamond cutters are employed in Antwerp. 16 billion in diamond uh, uh, trade annually. It is the home of four trading exchanges, including the Diamond Club of Antwerp and the BVD. Business is dominated by Jewish people. It is the reality of that industry. Uh, it's a place of high fashion. It's got uh, top class restaurants and it's a celebratory city. This is where people go to buy their, their uh, engagement rings and, and get engaged there. They go for their wedding rings and also their anniversaries. We look at Israel. The Israel uh, Diamond District is located in the city of Ramat Khan. It's home of uh, Israel Diamond Industry. It is punctuated by four buildings which are interconnected by bridges. This was built specifically for the, for the diamond trade. It contains the world's largest diamond trading floor. Incidentally, the Khaboroni will be, the Khaboroni Diamond Floor will be the world's largest. It's got Harry Oppenheimer Museum which out of interest has got uh, an hourglass made of diamond sand. Can you imagine that? Now, with Khaburoni, we're saying what are the opportunities? Given the, the commonalities that I've just talked about with the diamond cities of the world, what are the different features of the, uh, which are common to the, diamond, uh, uh, to the diamond cities that we believe Khaburoni needs to have? High class cuisine, kosher, Indian food, and for those NBCC members who are want to get into diamond trade, maybe we'll have soul food, high quality restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> the language of trading is Yiddish and, and also Indian and Chinese, so there's opportunity there. You want to start schools that teach that. You need high security. The city needs to be fashion driven. You need to be able to trade in large volumes of cash. You need a buoyant uh, city life. The city image and feel has to be suave and celebratory. That's the nature of a, of a diamond city. And we need to interweave, interweave uh, uh, tourist att attractions and, and cultural attractions to the trading in, in diamonds. The largest uh, 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 trading floor yet to come, as I mentioned earlier. So, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that's the opportunity that we have in Khaburoni. Uh, and the question is, uh, the opportunities that we have in making Khaburoni ready are, are there in the cultural area, business, religion, language appreciation, that is tourism, uh, and, and so on. Security, $400 million uh, in cash of diamond trade taking place in New York. In Botswana, it will be $6 billion annually uh, to start with, and that will be uh, increasing year after year. In infrastructure, our airport's ready. Is our air transport ready? Do we have international flights uh, uh, coming into Khaburoni? Uh, from all the various uh, uh, diamond cities of the world? The answer is no. So there is an opportunity there. Um, the road network, are we ready? There is an opportunity there that the road and transport network is not ready. We don't have the type of quality uh, taxi system, for instance, and limousines and so on that, the, that diamond traders would want to be transported in. Entertainment and hospitality, we need five-star restaurants. We need the, we need the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the Marriott and, and, and Four Seasons of this of this world uh, 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 to, be, to be built in Khaburoni. So there is uh, another opportunity for, uh, uh, for, for NBCC members wanting to partner with, uh, with, the, with, with locals in Botswana. Those are just some of the, the few areas that I thought I would just highlight in terms of drilling down on some of the issues that uh, the minister uh, 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 quickly touched on. Um, but it is by uh, uh, members, uh, 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 members here and uh, dear audience, it is by, by reason of the, the foregoing that we have seen it fit to uh, assign an MOU with, uh, with uh, the NBCC. And this MOU will facilitate the development of, of a framework for, for cooperation with, between Bokim and NBCC, as I, I, I alluded to earlier, 
support processes for business and economic development and development of trade between our two countries. And of course, that memorandum of agreement is, uh, is the main event today. Thank you. Uh, that was the president of Bokim, Mr. Alec uh, Munchusi. Mr. Alec Munchusi is also the managing director of Systems and Services, which is an electrical engineering uh, company based uh, in Botswana. I would like to call upon uh, Ms. Isaacs to come forward and uh, facilitate uh, the signing ceremony or the marriage between Bokim and NBCC. Yes, I think we need to 